Hi, my friend. We are here for Monday night, my fireside chat version of my daily video. I'm Pat Sloan, and it is the end of our layer cake sew along. So I'm going to talk about that. I talk about the Morrison Park, which is still up on the wall. <laughs> and uh, let's see, Cozy Things, which is our next Wednesday sew along, starts this Wednesday. And I have a few little early things you can do. And uh, maybe if we get to it, I have a little discussion from a Q&A. So we'll see how it all goes. So the topic for today is our organization tip number three of eight. So this one, uh, you're going to have to think about it a second because I'm not sure that everybody knows immediately what is your oldest project bin. <clears throat> now, some of you are right away going to go, oh yeah, I know what's the oldest one that I have sitting there that I haven't worked on for ages. That's it. Others of you don't keep a lot, have a lot of projects, so your oldest project might not actually be that old. Uh, but if you have not, if you have a lot of projects, that's where it becomes a little bit more, like a little bit more brain power. Like, which is the oldest project? So today is to find your oldest project bin. I would love for you to share it over at the quilt quote along with over at the group quote along with Pat Sloan. Uh, you can tell me about it here in the comments of YouTube if you're not over there, but you should be, you should be over there. Uh, but tell me what's in that oldest bin. Plus make some decisions on that. Do you still love it? Do you still want to work on that oldest project that you haven't worked on forever? Is and why haven't you worked on it? And now that you're going to open it up and take a look at it, decide you do want to keep it. Uh, you know, be sure you want to keep it. If not, let's get it out and, you know, let release it, <laughs> pack out into the world somehow. Um, but if you're going to keep it, make a plan to work on it. Move it forward a little bit to the next step. You know, make a plan for sometime this month, you know, maybe this week even. That's your, okay, I'll work on it for an hour. I'll get it out, look at it. What happens is though, if you leave it too long in the bin, you sort of forget where you were with it. Is everything even in the bin anymore? You know, so many people go, they open this thing and they're like, ah, pattern pieces are missing, fabric's missing. Um, so, or they, they don't even remember how, what they were doing. Um, so today, evaluate that. That is your topic, uh, organize, organizing today. Okay, layer cake. Da -da 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 -da. I have it folded here because I want to show you the quilting on it. And over at my website, there is a picture of it and you can, you can see it all hanging. You've been seeing it every Monday anyway. I couldn't get it switched down again because Greg is off helping the neighbor. And when I want to do the video and I can't, I can't, uh, I don't have the strength to put these up there. So here we go. I wanted you to see the quilting that Cindy and Dennis did for me uh, at the spa. They are the spa where I send everything to become beautiful. So there's spider webs. And then you can see here, there's a bat. See here, the bat. We have Betty and Bob the bat that fly around our house. And let's see. There was something else. There's actually a spider. Oh, there's one. Yes. Lovely. Isn't she lovely? We have a huge spider web outside right now. Uh, and so I'm kind of fond of the one out there as long as she stays up in her web and doesn't come down. Uh, so this is, this needs binding. So I am going to get the black out. Originally I was thinking of doing this charcoal, but I, I actually think I would, I really want black. So I need to get the black out solid black and do the binding on this so that I can go hang it in the living uh, hang it in the living room yes <laughs> and use it you know either hang it or put it on the back of the sofa not sure which but I'm thinking that in the next two days this will this will get done so let me just put it over there and I will uh, show you on Facebook and Instagram when it's the binding is done. I need to get it done. It's been sitting there like weeks now. Um, I think I can do it. It's that these bigger ones are harder. They're a little bit bulkier. All right, let's talk about Morrison Park. Let's do a little recap on the wall. There we go. So this one will be a kit and there's another one that will be a kit yesterday, Sunday. I did a bonus video uh, and there's also a whole article with lots of pictures of uh, my family helping me take the pictures and over at their house and uh, you can see some close-ups plus some other digital pattern pictures that we recolored digitally. Uh, 
because they're also really cute in Morrison Park and the list. You, there's still people who have their um, mind is open. You can enter mine and there might be one or two that still have an open uh, for theirs. Uh, but they may have, most of them may have closed uh, on Sunday on the, you know, because they, no, no, well, probably not Wendy's because uh, she was only on Saturday. So go, go and look. Okay, go and look. I don't keep track of that part. I just know that by the 15th, they're all done as if her mind goes to the 16th. So you go and enter uh, the Fat Quarter Shop. Uh, is has a gift certificate for $100 at my site. You have to enter at my website. And it's at the end, at the end, the very end, past all the comments. And if you can't see, if you go to the very end, you can't see an open box to type in, then change devices or change um, browsers. Okay, so that's Morrison Park. And if you loved Wendy's Elephant, uh, on Saturday, she's making a pattern. It's it's in its final testing, and so once she's it's done, she'll let me know, and I'm going to run a sew along for the elephant. Yes, it's so cute. I wanted to do a sew along for one of the designers, and I decided the elephant was the one that I wanted to do. Who knows? I might do a second one, uh, but right now we we'll do the elephant, uh, and so that'll be available. Um, I would say, you know, when it's available, I'll let you know. Probably in less than two weeks. So she was saying about a week, yeah, a little bit more. All right, I want to talk about co cozy things, but first, before I talk about cozy things, I um, I got you know a lot of quilts going on right now. They're in that finished stage because I decided that I didn't want to let them become tops. I still have quite a few from beginning of the year that are still tops, like the rainbow and the spools, um, but I didn't want some of the other ones. So I have gotten this little stack that I need to address. Uh, ASAP <laughs> because these are the bindings the bindings for four one two three four bindings material for four of the quilts and I want to get those cut the strips cut and then uh, wrapped and ready and I also did one label so there's one that I put a did a triangle and put a strip on it for one of the labels that's for um, the the be thankful uh, panel but this is a must do um, I have over in the credenza over there, there's its drawers and one of the drawers I have a bunch of the batting in there and you know kept together so as the things come back I can just get out because I'm much more motivated if the batting is already ready. You know, like I don't have to get it out and cut it and press it and all that. So I need to do that over the next couple evenings because it's not really that hard to do and uh, I don't have to have a lot of brain power or a lot of strength if my hands are like tired out for the day I can still you know cut the strips and press them you know it's it's pretty easy at least that's what I'm telling myself <laughs> it's like gotta make it easy gotta make it easy <laughs> um, I do want to show you have over here I want to show you this panel that I got because I don't even know what I'm gonna do but you know when sometimes when the cute stuff comes in you just have to get it and this is a panel that has a, like you could do pillow or tote bag and it's um, got like a kid stuff I think on the you know although I would certainly be uh, thrilled to hang this for myself but it's by uh, ginger burr and there is the llama. Look at the llama and the flamingo because I just love flamingos. Do you remember like if you read Jen's about page on the tour um, of PB and J designs? She loves flamingos. I do too. Pink, pink birds. Who can't love a pink bird? The koala and the sloth. Look at them. And then at the bottom of the panel are two um, squares that can be used for, I think, for a pillow. But I could make a tote bag, like put one on each side. But I had to get it for the flamingo. That has to be a pillow. So there we go. So I will link you to that. But I just had to get this. And at the same time, because, because I had to order in and I needed to get the free shipping because that's the way I am, I ordered a few other things. Plus, I found a great big white dot because I looked up there. I didn't have a dot with, uh, white with black on it. And it's like, oh, OK, let me, let me get that. So this panel is super cute. There's fabric line that goes with it. It's darling. Um, but I just, I don't know. I'm thinking that that actually, we have, um, I have a niece that is having her first baby uh, coming up. So I'm thinking 
you know, like maybe that would be good for her. So, you know, that looks kind of like a baby thing, don't you think? That that could be really good for her. <laughs> you just don't know, do you? I mean, moms now want to, they, they, they can have multiple quilts, I've decided. Even if they're doing the baby's room a certain way, um, they can still have extra quilts that don't fit that color scheme or whatever to use. That's my thought because I still like to just make what I want to make. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it'll work. Um, I want to say thank you. I had a wonderful card um, from Jane. Look at this. Look at this. To <laughs> the jumping toast. That's so cute. But Jane sent it's a little toast to celebrate you. <laughs> this kind of stuff just makes me smile. It is just amazing. But Jane sent me a beautiful um, a sentimental bracelet. Uh, I can't wear it yet because of the scars, but when I can wear it, I will. But these are bracelets with sayings on them. And so I just thought she picked one out just for me. And thank you, Jane. It's just, that was just so sweet and really um, very, very thoughtful to go through and pick one just for me. So I, I love that. It's a neat, neat concept to have the, you know, inspiration words um, given to you from somebody else. Mwah. So sweet. <laughs> so I want to talk about the cozy things that's coming up. Cozy things are so long. So I am going to show you the fabric that I'm working with. And this is a, this is something that you can do right now is to get your fabric Remember, we start Wednesday, and if you didn't get any fabric yet, you should. You need to at least use something you own if you're not going to buy something. Um, but I want to show you the sort of a thought process to, to, to go through to look at your fabric because this is a quilt with nine blocks and a setting. And uh, so I already have given you the layout in advance because this one goes right into December and honestly it was easier just to do the layout in the front. Usually I like to tease you a little bit, show you a little bit, lay out a little bit into it, but with only nine blocks, um, you know, I don't want to wait. But, but, <laughs> I am going to wait till I make some blocks before I piece the sash, before I piece the setting blocks. And this is a setting block here, this unit. It's basically like a courthouse steps. Uh, that's called a setting block because this is the layout. The things in the layout is the setting, the, the layout. You could call them layout blocks, although I don't ever heard anybody say that. Um, so, you know, setting blocks. And there's also a sashing, which I've already picked for mine. This sashing is the, uh, I'll show you when we're looking at it, but it's a big snowflake. It's red with white snowflakes. So it is going to be very dominant. The red with white snowflakes will be very, very dominant being these two long strips, uh, you know, vertical strips. So I am using uh, this fabric line called Snow Sweet, uh, and it's this is with a layer cake plus other fabric that we've bought. And so I first want you to take a look at whatever layer cake you decided you were going to use, because I want you to to divide it into colors so that you have a look at what you're doing. Here is um, this one has a group that is black. And then uh, there's a few pieces that are printed white, you know, like these cute snowmen, and there's uh, you know, some of the labels. So you have white, and then there's one yellow, and there's one uh, tan piece, which I have already used since I made some blocks. Uh, there's this pinky peach, and I'm gonna hold this to the side because I actually bought more of that color. So that's gonna go over to the side here. There's the light blue, everything with the light blue. Look at those cute snowmen. Oh my God, snow sweet. <gasps> so darling. Red, red, everything red. Got a whole bunch of red. There's a whole lot of red. And the snowflake, this is the one that I have the vertical. So this is very dominant and it's very uh, impactful because it has a high contrast, a high impact. It's a large snowflake. I mean, that is like maybe two and a half inches across, maybe a little, maybe a little bit more. So they're big snowflakes. Then there was a little bit of green. So a few green pieces. Now what I did was, let me just move the pinky peach over here for a minute. So what I did is I looked at all of these. I'm going to put each pile sort of out here um, 
and you can see then what's going on for colors. Get it all the way down. So to me, these were just a few too many of the colors. You know, like I want to um, ooh, get more of it in here. There we go. So I don't want to use all of these colors because with nine blocks and this really dominant red snowflake, let me get him out here, with this really dominant red snowflake, uh, I just think that it's not very cohesive and it will be a bit mushy to use this much. So I decided that red and green make everything feel like Christmas, uh, unless you're doing something really springy with just mostly green and a little bit of red. But because I have so much red, red will be a very dominant color in here. So I am going to remove the green. So I am not even going to use the green. So the green won't be used in the project, in the Cozy Things quilt. Um, and I then, oops, I forgot to put the pink in there. So here's the pink, uh, which has you know, there's just a couple of pieces of it, but I purchased an additional bit of the pink. This is one of the fabrics I purchased extra so that I could add it in with everything. And then I also decided there's quite a, quite a nice number of pieces of black. So I am going to have predominantly red and aqua and green and then peach. And then I will add in bits of black. So this will be, and then the white, because I also have a basic blossom for the background. This is just the white that came in the, in the layer cake. So these are the fabrics that I'll do. So I took away the green, and I'm going to try to keep pink in every block and black in every block, or if not every block, most of them. Of the nine, you know, at least six will have black and pink, you know, so one of, one of the other or both. So that is the plan. Now, what I want you to do is go to your fabrics and do the same thing. Sort them by color. If you're working with a layer cake, often a fabric line has this array of colors and uh, depending on the pattern, they can look great. But for this particular pattern with just nine blocks, I'm thinking that you might want to, if it, if it feels a bit chaotic and not cohesive, then remove a color, remove one color. And then look at maybe using another of the colors just a little bit, you know, here and there, like in three, five, seven, nine, all of them, uh, because that is appealing to our eye, the odd numbers. So that is your assignment in advance of Cozy Things. Um, I'm also going to be referencing and talking about Huga, which is the Danish art of feeling cozy, the Danishness of coziness. And so I will list the books that I've read, and I've read a lot of them. <laughs> and I will list my favorite so that if you wanted to pick up that book at, at uh, either a digital copy or a real copy and then have it to, to use, because I think through this whole, I know through this whole thing of the cozy thing so along, more than just on Wednesday, I am going to talk about feeling cozy it's, and, and doing things to get that into our lives. So that'll be, you don't have to have a book about it at all, but I just thought you might like to see the ones that I've read and I have uh, two that I, that I would recommend. One is my favorite uh, and you know, so two, but basically two, but I'll give you the other ones also. And there's one that's a short sort of like 52 things. Uh, whatever it is, and that one's kind of fun too. So I'll list those all. All right, so there are two fabric lines I wanted to show you because if you have not thought about getting any fabric yet, but now you want to, uh, these I thought were really appealing for different reasons. This one is called Winter Rose. And so I wanna show you Winter Rose. One of the things about it is it has a super gorgeous big print. So it has a, it does have that so a little bit of red, but it's more like a green black. I think it doesn't look so Christmassy at all. It's called Winter Rose. So it's not really made to be a Christmas line. So, but the black is very elegant. And there's actually a stripe in it. And it has this really pretty uh, big floral. 
and a burgundy, then a green, and then a red, red, red with holly, which I think is super nice. Then it has these prints here. It has a few of them. There we go. Which is a big print, which would be absolutely beautiful for the long, for the long strip. And they ha it comes with that in, that's the red. There's some green. I love these tans. Here it comes in this. So if you wanted it really calm and soothing, this was, this was like my second choice. I almost decided to do this one. There's it is in green. It's just that print is gorgeous. Here's some more of the, the flower. Here's another one. You could also do these, you know, you could also do this big floral, but it would be a fun line to use for cozy things. And if you like to have something in that with, you know, black, I think makes things look elegant unless they're like fun, like, like these guys, you know, like <laughs> there's a white on white of those. That's just it's just so pretty. So this is called Winter Rose. I'll link you below. And if you've been looking for something like this, it is a really, really pretty line. The other one that I think would be uh, kind of interesting to do is flannel. Now, I don't know. I have not sewn with, this is printed flannel, not woven flannel so you know printed flannel is a little bit thicker if you've ever noticed the difference it's not that much thicker but it's a little bit thicker so you know i don't do a tiny patchwork you know two and a half inch squares is is it but they are they do make a little bit thicker seam and i just want to show this one to you because this is all very tonal it's 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 what would be called maybe more low volume which is something i want to talk about um, the plaid, I mean, it's just soft. I could see this whole quilt done. See here, you could do the whole thing in, in this very soft beige and, or grays and beige. Uh, but there's the plaid and it's got a little tan in it. There's the dot, there's see the little tan in there, um, a light dot. So any of those, those two dots or the plaids, any of these would be great for the long strip. You know, those would be, you know, either making it more prominent or if you wanted to make it like this, which would be, you know, very light um, or even a light dot if you just wanted very little. But look at this. Look how cute this fabric is. It's got all like a collage stuff on it. That is so cute. Okay, let me just pull this over. Here's the collage stuff. I don't know why I didn't think about that earlier. Here's deer upside down to you. More deer. So if you like deer... Uh, this one is the snowflakes and that's it. So you have a couple of sort of really big prints and then uh, the plaids and the dots. So if you were looking for a flannel line that's a little bit different, a little bit more interesting, you know, uh, and very soft, I like this one. I like it. I might even try making a block with that one, seeing how it goes, seeing how it looks, as I say. <laughs> <laughs> That's my it's sort of hard for me to do too many extra things right now. It's not really that good. Uh, now, I wanted to do a Q&A. So it's going to be a little bit longer Monday night here. Not too long because we're almost done. This will be the Q&A. But I had a question from who asked this? Uh, Linda. Linda asked, what was low volume fabrics? And so I brought, this would be one, white with a dot. And I brought this container of mine, which are all my light colored prints that have uh, images on them. So first let me just tell you, low volume is a term. I asked around, asked to my designer community friends, you know, had anybody any idea, because I know it is not a new term, low volume. Basically it's a description of fabrics that have, uh, don't have a good strength. The fabrics that have image, like, like some sort of image on it, but they basically read light, but they're not solid, and they don't read solid when you pull them from a distance. They have texture to them. Uh, something like the bees, you know, something like, and they don't have to be white, but they all, but they do tend to lean towards the light colors, like here's mushrooms, but it's a light background. It's not a lot of extra colors. Low volume would be this versus, probably this one that I have in here would probably not be a low volume. That's just the camera print. Whereas this would be more of a low volume. People use them as backgrounds. 
uh, so that you have a lot more interest in things. I've used them in a bunch of my things for backgrounds. Here we've got frogs. <laughs> I love the frogs. I love them. Um, text prints, you know, anything like this where you've got text, that would be like called a low volume. So how where that word come from? And how long has it been around? Well, the first uh, reference that anybody really can remember is from Malka Dubrowski. And Malka is a, uh, she does printing um, and then she does patterns and she did some fabric lines for a little while. Uh, but she is a, um, mostly does hand dyes and then uses those in her quilt. She makes a much more, a, a more modern quilt. But apparently back in 2009, so that's over 10 years ago, Malka wrote an article for Quilting Arts, I believe it was. I'll link you to her blog post about the article. It's not the article itself. It's only in that magazine. Um, but she wrote about using low volume that she didn't want uh, to have. She uses a lot of saturated colors. She makes a lot of bright quilts. So she wanted to work in the opposite of that. And so she called it low volume. Well, it must have just uh, spoke to a lot of people to reference this kind of fabric that way. You know, reference fabric that has some sort of print on it, but is not uh, overwhelmingly a particular color and they're more light background. See, there's another one, low volume. So that is where and how the term came about. It is basically light prints with little uh, with some design on them, but the design does not overpower and change it to a pink fabric. You know, you're basically still looking at something that looks light. Whites, creams tend to be what we're talking about. I don't know that somebody would reference a light pink fabric as low volume, but they could. Um, it's sort of, uh, it's just the opposite of bright. <laughs> so I hope that helps. Uh, and you can visit Malka and check out her other things at her website because she's uh, really fun to follow. She's always got some interesting things. I talked to her several times when I was doing a podcast uh, and she's uh, just just wonderful, wonderful to follow. And she mostly writes on Instagram. Uh, so you wanna check her out there. I'll put all those links below for you. All right, my friend. <laughs> if you didn't enter my giveaway or uh, check out the designers who did my Morrison Park tour. I hope that you go do that. Um, during this week, I will get out all of the fabrics from Morrison Park and show them to you. Today, I wanted to do these other things. So I will do that and I will get Greg to change the quilt to the uh, Garden Villa quilt. This is the summertime quilt, uh, which is one of the ones that will be a kit. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love you. Mwah. See you online.